Now this concept of bi-directional charging has become super popular. So today we're gonna focus specifically on Tesla's power share. And their power share feature is their take on bi-directional vehicle to home or V2H charging, where essentially when your electric vehicle is plugged in, it then becomes an available power source for your home in the event of a grid outage. Now, unfortunately to this point, there haven't been a ton of clear answers other than it's only available for the Tesla Cybertruck. But can this feature be a power wall replacement? I mean, most electric trucks like the Cybertruck exceed 100 kilowatt hours of energy capacity, and that's the equivalent of nearly eight power walls. So our objective today is to answer four questions. One, what Tesla vehicles are actually capable of power share? Two, when can we expect this feature to roll out to other Tesla vehicles? Three, what equipment do I need? And four, could PowerShare actually be an alternative to Powerwall for those that already have a Tesla vehicle? We're gonna stack these two options, PowerShare and Powerwall side by side and find out more. Let's get started and begin unpacking everything together. And welcome to the channel, my name is Zach. If this is content you enjoy, subscribe to the channel for more. And if at any point you end up getting some value in this video, drop me a like to let me know. Thank you all for your continued support. So part one, what Tesla vehicles are actually capable of PowerShare. At this moment in time, as we mentioned, PowerShare is unfortunately only available for the Cybertruck. Earlier this month, we did see an update on the PowerShare feature from the Cybertruck X account. The post stated, PowerShare update. Enabling PowerShare for your Cybertruck may take up to a week. However, if you have a solar energy system or a backup switch installed system, it will be enabled by the end of the year, 2024. And if you have a power wall, it won't be enabled until 2025. Now, when in 2025, that much isn't certain. But can your current Tesla eventually do this? Now, that's the part that's unclear. Is it software limited, hardware limited? What model years could theoretically do this? What's the story? I mean, I've even heard that the new Model Y Juniper is being reported to be capable of this power share feature. And right now, my research shows me that only three major vehicles offer this true bi-directional vehicle the home charging concept. Ford Lightning, Chevy Silverado, and then the Cybertruck. And it seems like every manufacturer from both the vehicle side and the residential storage side is offering some promise of bi-directional charging in the future. Now, not everyone loves Tesla, but Tesla does have a massive head start here over the competition due to market share of both their Powerwall products and their Tesla vehicle lineup. The infrastructure is already being set. And while Cybertruck has been super popular, posting as the third best selling EV in Q3 2024 behind only the Model 3 and Model Y, it's definitely not the vehicle for everyone. Now, back in September 2024, an article was released titled, Tesla Model Y is capable of bi-directional charging, Tesla only needs to flip the switch. If you want to read the full article, it's linked in the description below. The cliff notes are a German company named Ambibox who sells bi-directional charging and home battery solutions tested a 2024 Model Y with one of their bi-directional systems and they were able to prove it had this bi-directional capability. So it's possible Ambibox got the Model Y to discharge up to 10 kilowatts and this was all triggered through software from the charger. And there were no hardware adjustments made to the Model Y. And Ambibox stated that they only did this experience experiment to prove it's possible, not really to sell a solution. So it seems like this may prove that the new Tesla vehicles with the correct power electronics are in fact ready for this power share feature, just like the Cybertruck, but it's not quite ready for its release. The rest is up for speculation until confirmed otherwise by Tesla. But if you have a Tesla vehicle with a more recent model year and you feel like you're stuck and missing out, Hopefully this can give you a little bit of confidence. And side note, when it comes to solar or power wall systems, if you need any assistance with your Tesla software, getting a quote, or you wanna hire me to help you figure out which strategy and option are really best for you, let's book a call. I have a few different options that you can find in the description below. All right, part two, when can we expect this feature to roll out to vehicles other than the Cybertruck? All right, let's take a step back to Tesla's investor day in March of 2023. It was stated at this time that they are expecting that a 2025 rollout could be a possibility. A question was asked about Tesla's reluctance to rolling out bi-directional charging and whether that was intentional or not, seeing as this could really make their vehicles even more useful to consumers. Drew Baglino, senior vice president of powertrain and energy at the time had this response. Quote, it wasn't a conscious decision to not do it. It just wasn't a priority at the time. As we continue to improve the power electronics in our vehicles, we found ways to bring bi-directionality while reducing the cost of power electronics. We are in the middle of a power electronics retool that will bring that functionality to all of our vehicles over the next two years, let's say. 
end quote. But that statement and that comment about the two-year rollout was met with a look from Elon, a pretty quick ending from Drew, and then Elon taking over to explain how he really doesn't feel many people will use bi-directional charging unless they do have a power wall. And he mentioned this is due to the inconvenience of having your vehicle be your only source of backup power. And if you need to leave the house and unplug your car, your house will go back offline, which makes total sense and is a point of friction. Elon did state that he sees the value of bi-directional charging being that the vehicle is available as a supplemental storage capacity if needed for a prolonged outage. And I agree with this statement, but I also understand he's going to downplay this feature regardless to ensure it doesn't hinder the Powerwall success. Now, this was nearly two years ago. 2025 is right around the corner and Cybertruck is showing glimpses of this coming to market at large scale, but is it gonna scale beyond the Cybertruck? I expect so, but I don't think that they're in a rush. I mean, why would they be? Until direct competition really forces them to do so, like the Lightning and Silverado did to the Cybertruck, there is no sense of urgency. All right, part three, for PowerShare, what equipment do I need? Currently, there are a couple different installation setups available in order for you to be prepared for this PowerShare feature once it's released. The first one is if you already have an existing Powerwall system. Tesla says no additional installation is required if you already have any of the Powerwall systems. Through an over-the-air firmware update, your PowerShare vehicle can intelligently work with your Tesla hardware to extend backup power and duration. Additionally, when it's paired with a Powerwall, any generation wall connector works as well and you do not need the Tesla Gateway 3V. So for those of you who are researching a Powerwall installation, there are no special requests you need to make with your installer other than ensuring that your wall connector is a backed up load. So if you have partial home backup, this EV charger breaker needs to be in your critical loads panel. If you have whole home backup, then you're good to go. The other installation methods are for those of you who have no power wall system. You will need to install the Tesla Universal Wall Connector, the PowerShare Gateway, which is that 3V model, and you do have the option of using the backup switch if it's approved by your utility provider. Just like when it's paired with the power wall system, this is gonna enable an easier installation due to less electrical work being needed. So if this is is the route that you might be considering and you're thinking of just bypassing the power wall altogether keep in mind the true cost gap between installing power share equipment and having an actual power wall installed might not be as big as you think. And we're gonna discuss that cost specifically here in part four. Let's compare the two side by side. All right, part four, is PowerShare truly a Powerwall replacement? Let's compare the two and discuss some of the key features of a Powerwall system when it's compared to a PowerShare setup with the Tesla Cybertruck. As far as power output, both options have a continuous output rating of 11 and a half kilowatts. Capacity, I think it's obvious that the Cybertruck wins here at 123 kilowatt hours and the Powerwall is at 13 and a half kilowatt hours. I mean, even a base Model 3 has just about a 60 kilowatt hour battery. So no matter what, using an EV as your home battery will give you a significant upgrade in capacity when compared to home battery options. And I think this is what makes bi-directional charging so interesting. That and the fact that you now have a vehicle that can serve two purposes. Load start capability. Remember, this metric determines how heavy of a load we can start up from a dead stop, mainly things like your AC unit. The Cybertruck alone has an LRA of 110, which should be suitable for some ACE units. But if you have multiple ACE units or a larger unit, the Cybertruck alone will likely not be able to support these loads during a grid outage. Now the Powerwall 3 has an LRA of 185, which will be enough for a five ton ACE unit or multiple ACE units in some cases. If you do get multiple power walls or combine the two together, power share and power walls, you're gonna be completely fine and have a lot of horsepower in that system. During a grid outage, the Cybertruck alone cannot be recharged by solar energy, whereas a power wall system can be recharged from solar, which will help you sustain a prolonged outage. Additionally, when paired with power wall, the solar panels on your roof can also supply power to everything in your home when the grid is offline, including your electric vehicle. When the grid does go offline, the Cybertruck transfer speeds can range from a few seconds to 45 seconds. Tesla quotes it will be under one minute. However, the truck does need to be plugged in. If not, you will have to go plug it in and then start that process. So no matter what here, you are gonna experience a small delay when it comes to that handoff from the grid to your vehicle for power supply in your home. Now, power wall transfer speeds are within milliseconds and automatic. This would prevent things like your Wi-Fi, your lights, your clocks, 
and other electrical loads from experiencing any interruption. The Powerwall is stationary and designed for day-to-day -day home use for evenings and on-peak rates, as well as backup events. And as you all know, you can program your Powerwall to leverage time of use rates and really maximize your day-to-day -day energy savings, including VPP and exporting energy to the utility during high value times. Now, PowerShare is designed for backup events only and not day-to-day -day usage. So you won't be able to take advantage of any of the time-based control features. Honestly, even if the software was enabled to do so, I don't think that's practical since you can't really rely on your vehicle always being available to maximize your utilities rates. Solar and batteries are a way better solution for that. Now in the United States, both of these options have federal tax incentives. The installation of an EV charger setup like PowerShare should be eligible for a 30% EV federal tax credit. However, that is capped at $1,000. Additionally, your cost to install a Powerwall system is also eligible for a 30% federal tax credit. However, that has no cap. Keep in mind, I am not a tax professional. The links for more information on both of these options directly from the IRS can be found in the description below. Now for PowerShare, I have seen installation costs, yes, installation costs only, in the $2,500 to $6,000 range, depending on the scope of your project, that does not include your equipment. According to the Tesla website, the PowerShare equipment currently costs $2,500, so that puts you in that $5,000 to $8,500 plus dollar range. But keep in mind, all of my research has been through various forums like Tesla Motors Club and Reddit, which most of these accounts were mentioning these quotes are from Qmerit. You can then factor any tax credit value from there if applicable. If you're thinking of just trying to install this equipment yourself, good luck, because Tesla is not gonna let you purchase this equipment until you're under contract with a certified installer. Now with the Powerwall system, everything including the cost of the battery and all of the necessary components can be installed for more in that $10,000 to $15,000 range, let's say, but it's gonna shrink a bit faster after your federal tax credit since there is no cap on that 30%. This is also assuming it's installed with solar panels. Again, the scope of your project will better determine your specific cost. Realistically, your dollar would be much better spent with a Powerwall install in my opinion. I mean, to me, the Powerwall offers the most value outside of the overall capacity differences. So by combining the two, a solar and Powerwall system with the promise of this PowerShare benefit, I truly think you get the best of both worlds. The solar and Powerwall system is gonna give you all the features and automation and value that you expect from a true home battery system. The vehicle is just going to give you one massive expansion pack. I understand the attraction of bi-directional charging because you get that dual purpose functionality out of your car to act as a home battery when it's not in use, but I'm not sure I see the real life practicality for most just yet. Final verdict, bi-directional charging is really just a complement to the home battery solution and not a full replacement. Things can change, of course, as hardware and software continue to improve. And I know in this industry, this type of stuff changes really fast. Now, if you haven't seen the video where I answered 47 of my most frequently asked questions on the Powerwall 3, you should go check it out. Thanks for watching, like and subscribe for more, and I will see you all next time.